Welcome back to the channel here. So in today's video, we are going to be building out a uh, React calendar application. And in order to do that, we're going to use a couple packages, one called React Big Calendar. Uh, we're going to use a date picker component, and then we're going to use a, a date package called date FNS. So without further ado, let's get into this. So I just have a terminal open right here. And I'm just going to do a create react app. So I'm going to go MPX and I'm going to say create uh, react app. And then I'm going to call it Cal app and we'll let that run. All right. So once that's finished installing, we can just uh, CD into our folder here. So that's going to be ca called uh, Cal app for me. And then I'm just going to open it in VS code like this. All right, and then once you're in VS Code, I'm just going to open up an integrated terminal here. And inside of this, uh, let's just clear out some of this. And I'm going to want to run a couple things. So we're going to add a couple packages here. So we're going to say yarn add like that. And then the three packages we want uh, are going to be called react uh, dash big dash calendar. Uh, the next one's going to be react uh, date picker. And then the last one's going to be date uh, FNS like this. So let's run those. All right. And let's just make sure everything's running so we can say yarn start. And you can see here everything looks like it's running just fine. So the two packages we're going to be using, this is going to be our calendar app. So this is similar to what we're going to be building out. Uh, and we're going to add the ability to add a different event also. Um, so that's what it's kind of going to look like. And then uh, this is the React Date Picker, which will allow us to add the event. So those are kind of the two main components of this video. So let's go and actually start coding this up. So let's give ourselves a little room here and open up the uh, app.js, which is basically going to be um, all of our work done in here. Let's close this out. And we can come in here and clear out some of this stuff so we don't need any of this here. And we get rid of this logo. And we'll keep the app.css, although we'll go into the app.css. And uh, we'll keep, we'll get rid of everything below here. We don't need any of that. Okay, and we might change some stuff in there, but we'll see. All right, so come back here. And the first thing we're gonna do is just bulk bring in a bunch of stuff. So I'm just gonna copy this over um, and then I'll talk about it. Okay, so these are the packages we're gonna wanna bring in. So we want the calendar and the date FNS uh, localizer from React Big Calendar. Uh, we're gonna get format from date FNS. Date FNS breaks these into different packages. Uh, so we actually can uh, get them individually so we don't uh, use the entire package. So we're going to use the format, the parse, the start of week, uh, and the get day all from date FNS there. And then we're going to bring in the react build, big calendar, uh, slash lib slash CSS slash react big calendar CSS. And that's just going to style our, um, calendar basically. And then finally, we just uh, want to bring in React here and the date picker component that we added. Now, if you want to remember all this stuff, it is in the documentation for these various uh, things right here. Uh, so you can check all of that out yourself if you like. All right, so now let's uh, start coding here a little bit and we'll come in here. Let's close this out. And inside of uh, above our app right here, we're going to want to add uh, something called locals. So we'll say const and we'll say locals. And this is going to be the area that we want to refer our calendar to. So for us, that's going to be en will go us, but you could do a different locale if you're from there. And then we're just going to bring in require and we will say date FNS. And that's going to be slash locale uh, slash en dot us. And you can see all the different options popping up right there. But that's what we're going to bring in for us. Okay, so that's good. And then down here, we want to use the same thing. So we're going to say const and we'll say localizer. And that's going to be equal to date fns localizer like that. And then this will be an object. And here we're going to pass in a few different things. So we're going to pass in format. We're going to pass in parse. 
we'll pass in uh, start of week. Uh, we'll pass in get day. And these are all the different functions that we have available to us. And you can check again the documentation for the different ones uh, and then locales like this. So this is what we're gonna bring in for our localizer, which you'll see in a sec we're gonna use um, in our actual calendar component inside of our uh, app here. All right, now to get us started, uh, I'm just gonna do some kind of dummy data here. So we're just gonna do a bunch of different events. So I'm just gonna type these out. And there's going to be an array of uh, objects here. All right, so you can see I have an array here of objects for these different events that we want to show on our calendar. So uh, we have a title. There's an all day option if you want, but uh, we don't have to add that. Uh, and then there's a start and an end date. So those are the main things, start, end, and title that you need. So I've added three, big meeting, vacation, and conference. And then the start date is the start of the event, and the end is going to be the end of the event, obviously. So let's uh, actually add in our component here and just see if we can get this looking uh, like a calendar. So if I come in here, uh, I've brought in that calendar app. So I want to say calendar and then this is where I'm going to use my localizer like this and I can make that uh, set that equal to localizer like so. And then I'm going to have the events. Now these are going to be all the different events that are going to be on my calendar and I've set that to uh, events for now and we'll add that to state later and then we'll have a start accessor and that's going to be equal to uh, start and then we'll have end accessor and that will be equal to end pretty straightforward uh, and then finally let's uh, give ourselves a little room here and then finally here I'm just gonna add a little style here and we'll say that's going to be equal to uh, height and our height is going to be of uh, 500 just a little inline style in here and we'll give a little margin and that will be equal to uh, 50 px like that now make sure you close this off right here otherwise that will not work and make sure this has a colon there all right so go ahead and save that and let's check this out and when we refresh, you can see here that we have these three uh, things right here. So that is looking good. We can actually change the dates up too. So we, right now we have the same dates, but let's uh, go back and just change those so we can see what that looks like. So let's say here we'll start on a different day. We'll go seven, we'll go six, and we'll go 10. And then down here we'll go, what, 20, and we'll say 23. Now, if we save that, we'll see how this looks. And you can see uh, it spans across the days that we uh, started and ended. All right, so already this is looking pretty good. So pretty cool start in a pretty quick amount of time right there. But we want to add a few other things now, like some state. So in order to do that, let's come into our app here and give ourselves a little bit of room here. And let's actually add the state here. All right, so in order to add this date, we're just gonna say const and we'll go new event and we'll say set new event like that. And then that'll be equal to use state. And to start with, we will just pass in an object here. So we'll say title and that's gonna be an empty string. And then we'll say start and that will be an empty string also and then end and that will also be an empty string. Okay, and it looks like uh, it got rid of the uh, use state. So let's come back up to react here and just add that again. All right, so that's good. And then uh, below this, let's just copy this down. And instead a new event here, we're gonna say uh, all events. And this will be a list of all our different events and we'll say set all events and then we're going to pass in here uh, and we'll just pass in up above this events where we want to start with so we'll actually pass that into state so like this and now in our um, app here where we have the events we actually want to pass in the all events which is going to be from our state so if we go ahead and save that it should be working good if we go back 
and check it out, still works fine, good. And then we come back and now uh, I want to add a handle event uh, function right here. So let's come down here and I'm gonna say uh, function and you can do it a uh, arrow function if you want, uh, handle uh, add event. And then in here, we're gonna set our event. So we're gonna say set all events like this. And I'm gonna do an array here and I'm gonna spread in all the events. So I'm spreading in all those events and then I wanna add the new event. And that's like this. So that's how this syntax is gonna work. I'm gonna spread in all these current events that we have and then this is the new event and then that'll push that on to this array. So that is how that shall work. All right, so now we wanna add a few of these components, the date picker and stuff in order to add this actual event. So we'll come down here and let's just add an H1 to start with. And that H1 will just say uh, calendar like so. And then below this, uh, we're gonna say an H2. And inside of this H2, we'll just say add new event. And we'll capitalize that. And then below that, we're gonna have a div here. And inside of this div, we're gonna say input, and we're gonna want a title, so that's how that's gonna work. So we're gonna say input of type text. We're gonna add a placeholder, and that is gonna say uh, add title. And then we'll have some style here, and that will be equal to, and we'll say a width of uh, 20%. We will say a margin right of uh, 10 pixels. And then that's gonna be it for our style. So let's come down and give ourselves a little more room to work with in here. And inside here, we're gonna have a value. And that value is gonna be equal to new event dot title. And that's how we're gonna work with uh, use state in terms of an object there. Um, so you do this dot syntax like that. And then here we want to do an on change. So let's say on change and we'll pass the event in and we'll say uh, set new event. And then we'll go and we'll have an object here. And again, we'll spread in the new event like that. And then we want to add uh, the title onto that. And that's going to be e dot target dot value. All right, so that is how that is gonna look. And then we wanna make sure we're closing this off, which we are right here. So we have the value here, which is new event.title. Then we're gonna have an on change function in line here where we set the new event and we're gonna spread into the object here. So this is the new event object here. So we're gonna spread in the current new event, and then we're gonna pass the uh, title uh, onto that and uh, update the title. All right, so that's good for title. Now, if we come down below here like that and we can pass in the uh, date picker component and we wanna bring that in, which I think we'd have already. It looks like it deleted it real quick. So we wanna bring that uh, date picker component in again. So date picker from react date picker. And then this is what we're gonna use down here. So we'll say uh, date picker like this. And we're gonna have a few things here. So let's say a placeholder again and it's gonna say placeholder text instead of just placeholder. And that's gonna be a uh, start date. And then we're gonna have a style here and that's gonna be equal to uh, margin uh, right. And that will be of again, 10 pixels. And then give ourselves a little room here. So make sure we come down here. And then right here, we're gonna say uh, selected and that will be equal to new event dot start like that and then on change and that is going to be equal to and we'll pass in that start there and we'll do an arrow function we'll say set a new event like this and then again we're going to do the same thing and spread in this uh, new event like that and then we wanna pass in start as our second thing. Now you can say, you'd normally wanna go like this and say start and start, but because they're the same in JavaScript, we can get rid of uh, just one of those like that and just pass in the start. 
All right, and then we wanna close this off, make sure we do that, and that is looking good. And then we can just copy this down here. And for our second date picker, we want the placeholder text to say uh, end date. Uh, the margin right, we don't need the styling in the second one here. And the selected is gonna say new event dot end here. And we're gonna say end, and we will say new event like this, and same thing, but end like that. All right, so that all is looking great. Now, the last thing we wanna add here is a submit button. So we'll just say button, and then in here, we'll just say style, and that's gonna be equal to uh, margin top, and that will be of uh, 10 picks as well. And then uh, we wanna have an on click like this. And that's gonna say handle, that's gonna be the function we created above. So handle, handle add event. And remember, this is what we uh, are calling with this button when we submit our, uh, our little form here or whatever. All right, so handle add event. And then finally, we just wanna say add event. And if we go ahead and save everything, it's gonna reformat nicely for us. So now we have our button here, our margin, we have our calendar, um, and it looks like everything should be pretty good. Let's check it out. Okay, so this is our uh, little app right now. We have a title here, we have a start date, we have an end date, and it looks like we need to bring in some styling from this because this is not looking so hot. So it looks like we need the CSS from the date picker here. So again, that'll be in uh, the um, docs if you want, but I'll just uh, paste it right now. So this is the import react date picker slash disk slash react date picker CSS. So make sure we have that, otherwise it's not gonna look so pretty. All right, so now this looks like it should be working. We have our title, so let's try this out. Um, we'll just say test and we'll pick a start date. And the styling could be a little bit better, but we're not gonna worry about that right now. And an end date, we'll say over here. And if we press add event here, you can see we have our start date and our end date and our test that goes across all of these different things. So that is looking pretty good. Um, so pretty easy to get started with a calendar. Now these won't persist because we're just setting it in state locally. Um, if you want to persist, you could try uh, local storage or something to add that if you didn't want to do a database. Um, and I have a video on that. If you want to check that out, maybe I'll leave a link in the description um, for that. But you can see this is cool. We have a week view, we have day view, we have agenda view. So different, different kind of views. Uh, we can go back and forth between the various months. It's just kind of a nice little calendar um, app if you uh, want to make one yourself. So... That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.